Bitcoin is, is certainly at least digital gold. It's going to eat gold. It's got all of the great attributes of gold, and it's got none of the defects of gold. If you could teleport gold from New York to Tokyo in a, in a few minutes, people would like it. Um, it's going to divert capital from risk, a, risk assets and risk ETFs like SPY. And you can see that uh, these, uh, these ETFs are doing that. The halving is going to cut the organic supply of natural sellers in half around April 20th. That means there's only about 31, 32 million dollars a day of natural sellers. And the price of Bitcoin is going to have to adjust up in order to meet that investor demand. So I think that's what's going to happen next to the asset class. MicroStrategy founder and executive chairman Michael Saylor holds the belief that Bitcoin is on the brink of making history in 2024 particularly during the fourth month of the year when the much-anticipated halving event is scheduled to take place. Saylor, a prominent business figure and staunch Bitcoin advocate, suggests that we are on the verge of witnessing the most significant event since the inception of the leading cryptocurrency over 15 years ago. There have been three previous Bitcoin halvings, each resulting in a reduction of the cryptocurrency's supply by having the block reward, all of which had notable impacts on its price. However, Saylor asserts that the 2024 halving will be unprecedented, owing to the immense success of spot Bitcoin ETFs, which have accumulated over $55 billion in assets and $110 billion in flows in just two months. He predicts that Bitcoin ETFs will soon surpass the current $94 billion AUM of gold ETFs, achieving this milestone in a matter of months rather than years. With thousands of institutional investors across the United States either purchasing or planning to purchase Bitcoin through these ETFs, demand for the leading digital asset has surged significantly, surpassing daily supply by multiples in a matter of weeks. As the supply is further reduced by half during the upcoming halving, Saylor anticipates a hyper-imbalance between supply and demand for Bitcoin, unlike anything seen before. In his recent interview with CNBC, Saylor discusses his outlook for Bitcoin in 2024 and beyond, emphasizing that there is now a limited window to acquire Bitcoin at a relatively low price before its value escalates significantly due to the pronounced supply-demand imbalance following the halving. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. There's no doubt in my mind Bitcoin was a better investment at 17,000 than it was at 65,000. I take the Warren Buffett view on this. Bitcoin's a superior investment to gold, equity bonds, and real estate because it's digital. You can trade it a million times faster than conventional assets using a computer. It's available. Most other assets only trade less than 20% of the time. Bitcoin's trading 168 hours a week. We bought $800 million of Bitcoin, and a lot of it uh, we bought uh, over the weekend when all the conventional markets are closed. It's global. It's the most widely recognized and trusted uh, own, as investment asset in the world right now. It's ethical because it's the king of all commodities. There's no issuer. There's no company. There's no country controlling it. And fundamentally, it's, it's useful. Thousands of market makers can trade it all the time. Millions of companies can trade it, billions of people. If you want to buy a house on Saturday in Africa, this is the way to do it. If you want to buy a car on, on Sunday morning, this is the way to do it. So, so it's a pretty great asset. It's, it's the greatest of the assets, in, in my opinion. There's no second best asset. So I didn't have any question about it. We're just waiting for the rest of the world to realize how good it is. As for your second question, the having. Look, the, the selling in the market for the past month has been primarily bankruptcy estates that are liquidating GBTC at FTX or Genesis or the like. Once they got done rebalancing, the natural sellers are the miners. The miners can only sell 900 Bitcoin a day right now. They're only going to be able to sell 450 Bitcoin a day coming the end of April. As long as there's more demand in the market than the 450 Bitcoin a day, there isn't any catalyst to drive this asset down. It has no cash flows. The critics think that's a, a defect. It's a feature. With no cash flows, no quarterly results, no product cycles, this is the longest lived asset in the financial ecosystem with the least uncertainty. 
we're buying it to hold it 100 years. So that being the case, that 66 to $16,000 crash, that shook out the tourists, that shook out the non-believers. When it was 16000 we were all ready to write it to zero. And that's what you'll find with, with the Bitcoin maximalists. So now we're writing it the other direction, and the protocol's working, working to everybody's benefit. There's just no reason why it shouldn't just keep adjusting up to find the, the marginal uh, supply as the demand builds. A lot of times the skeptics, they say, Bitcoin looks too good to be true. It's so good to be true. Someone's going to take it away from you. And that's based on a fundamental misunderstanding about Bitcoin. People, people refer to it as currency or digital currency, and that's unfortunate uh, historical artifact. It's not digital currency. It's digital property. And once you make that big leap and understand it's property, you see the compelling use case is capital preservation for everyone in the world. There's no, there's no anathema associated with owning property. You can own a billion dollar building in New York City. You can own a, every place in the world where they allow you to own property, which means China, Europe, the US, they're going to embrace Bitcoin as digital property. All the controversial issues around, around cryptos have to do with their use as a medium of exchange. But what I'm here to say really is medium of exchange is only worth a trillion dollars. Store of value is worth a hundred trillion dollars. So I give your company, I give your family, I give your institution a billion dollars. I drop you in Africa and I say, you got to save the capital for a hundred years. What are you going to buy? And the answer is nothing. There is nothing on the entire continent you can buy that's better than Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's going to be embraced as property. It's going, to be, it's going to be controversial if people think of it as a currency. So I would encourage people to think of it as, as digital property, a billion dollar building in cyberspace. Over the years, Saylor has imparted numerous invaluable Bitcoin mantras, including his popular, there's no second best, and it's going up forever. These statements underscore Saylor's unwavering conviction in Bitcoin's supremacy and his steadfast belief that Bitcoin remains a worthwhile investment even at current high prices a sentiment that sets him apart from many investors. Indeed, over the weekend, Sailor's software and Bitcoin development company acquired an additional 12,000 Bitcoin for approximately $821.7 million, utilizing proceeds from convertible notes and excess cash at an average price of around $68,400 per Bitcoin. With this latest purchase, MicroStrategy now holds 205,000 Bitcoin, acquired for about $6.91 billion requiring just 5,000 more Bitcoin to possess 1% of the maximum total Bitcoin supply. From an initial $250 million investment, MicroStrategy has now allocated nearly $7 billion to Bitcoin. Prior to the emergence of Bitcoin ETFs, companies like MicroStrategy served as the sole means for investors to gain exposure to Bitcoin without directly purchasing the asset. During an interview with CNBC's Andrew Ross Sorkin, Saylor addressed concerns about the impact of ETFs, such as BlackRock, on MicroStrategy's role as a Bitcoin proxy company. He explained that MicroStrategy's business model differs from ETFs, offering investors unique benefits that they cannot find by investing in ETFs alone. BlackRock is like the, the container ship or the super tanker of Bitcoin. It can, they can take a billion dollars a day into their capital structure, and they can hold that very efficiently, 25 basis points. MicroStrategy is like air freight. We, we've got a higher performance. So What's going on here? MicroStrategy's got leverage. If we borrowed $800 million at 62 basis points, is there any company in the world that you wouldn't like to invest in that could borrow a billion dollars at less than 1% interest to invest in your best idea? So we get that very intelligent leverage. It's, uh, it's non-recourse, it's unsecured, and then we buy Bitcoin with it. That leverage gives us volatility. The vol it gives us performance. The performance gives us volatility. The volatility attracts capital, and we can then leverage more. Um, it's kind of intelligent because it's, uh, it's convertible debt. Um, it's, uh, it's given our shareholders more Bitcoin per share this week than they had a few weeks ago. So it's very accretive for them. And it's pretty compelling for every investor. If you're Bitcoin curious right now and you want to buy Bitcoin at the all-time high, how do you get the upside in Bitcoin with downside protection? MicroStrategy sold $800 million in debt, and we have $12, $13 billion of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So, so we're giving you an over-collateralized loan and the upside. 
But if you're a Bitcoin maximalist and you love Bitcoin and you want to hold it forever, the ETFs charge you 25 basis points. MicroStrategy is accreting. We're giving you a yield against your shares in a tax efficient fashion. So the maximalists like the equity, the, uh, the hedgers, they kind of like the upside with downside protection. The traders love the vol. You know, we've got a hundred X, a hundred vol asset here and they just like the vol. So we're, we're unique because you can't really trade options on the ETFs. And an ETF isn't going to issue a convertible bond with upside to Bitcoin, but downside protection. We have now rebranded ourselves as a Bitcoin development company. Think like a real estate development company. And certainly the substantial amount of our enterprise value is based on our unique ability to issue securities and, and to purchase Bitcoin with convertible debt, with equity and the like. Um, and so we understand that. But the only reason we could make this transition is because the software business was healthy. It does generate steady cash flow. It does allow us to issue debt, to issue equity. It, it does make us unique because we're able to we, we've got a very functional options market. We've got a very functional uh, debt market and we've got a very stable operating business uh, that we can use. If you look at our last result, we actually bought a lot of Bitcoin with with operating cash or cash out of the operating business. And that is purely accretive to our shareholders. So we think we're unique and that's working very, very well right now. Meanwhile. On-chain analyst Willie Wu suggests that Bitcoin's current market structure exhibits all the hallmarks of a full-blown bull market, with significant on-chain movement indicating genuine investor activity at higher price levels. In a recent thread, Wu acknowledges the unprecedented demand fueled by ETFs, the upcoming halving event, and other fundamentals that he believes will propel Bitcoin's price substantially higher. He notes that Bitcoin's current price of $71,000 places it within the upper bound model, which currently stands at $337,000 indicating that this bull market is still in its early stages, equivalent to $20,000 in the last cycle. In another post, Wu presents a composite view of Bitcoin's price trajectory using the BMI, a blend of 17 fundamental and technical macro signals. Breaking the upper blue band this week signifies, according to Wu, that we are in a bull market predominantly driven by fundamentals. Additionally, Wu highlights that the Bitcoin network is currently storing $1.8 billion of new capital daily marking the third highest figure on record after reaching an all-time high of $22.15 billion in January 2021. He emphasizes the forthcoming Bitcoin halving, which will decrease Bitcoin's inflation to less than half that of gold, dubbing Bitcoin as the hardest money in human history. These ultra-bullish sentiments from Michael Saylor and Willie will raise questions about Bitcoin's future trajectory. Do you share their optimism regarding Bitcoin reaching much higher prices before the end of the bull market? Feel free to share your thoughts and price predictions for Bitcoin in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.